All right, so I've been here in the Sonoran Desert, and I'll tell you, it's dry. I've been looking for food resources because I'm coming off of a 24-hour fast. I'm actually at a prehistoric Hoho Com site, a sedentary period site that's uh, quite honestly very, very large, um, about the same size, if not larger, than the famous Snake Town site. But coming off of this 24 hour fast, I am starving. <laughs> I'm very, very hungry and I've been looking for food resources out here. Uh, and I haven't had too much luck besides prickly pear cactus pads. The prickly pear cactus pads right now during this time of the year, they're quite large and I don't really like gathering them. They're very fibrous. They're not is tender. The younger growth is typically what I go after, but nonetheless, it is still edible, but it does take a lot of work to process it. And you can see a prickly pear cactus right off in the distance there. But here's something that I found that is an absolute treat and I am going to take advantage of it. So this cactus right here is called strawberry pincushion. And it's very, very recognizable. You can see it has kind of a snow cap on it. And you'll see the fruit protruding out of the cactus. They look like small chilies. These fruits are absolutely delicious. You can eat them raw. And they taste like a strawberry mixed with a kiwi. So once again, super excited and grateful for this little treat. Oh man, I'm telling you, it is so sweet. It is just amazing. Man, okay, I'm gonna gather the rest of those. All right, so you can see I got three more and I am going to enjoy. Okay, so looking at some of the local ceramics at this site, this is very similar to what we see in other Hohokam sites. Uh, this site does not extend into the later classic period. So you do not have the presence of a platform mound. But what you do have is pit house structures and trash middens, trash mounds. So this ceramic is a wingfield planeware and you can tell by the temper, it's a little bit hard to see, but it's a phyllite temper. And this is very, very common for the planeware in Hohokam society. Not only here, but further down south on one of the projects that I excavated at Pueblo Viejo, we had a large percentage of these planeware, wingfield planeware ceramics. So here's another piece and another one. Okay, we'll take a look at some additional examples and I'll show you one common feature that you'll find in the sedentary period ceramics, specifically the red on buff. Okay, here's another piece of red on buff. Here you can really see that nice design. Now, if you look careful, there's pitting in this clay. And what we believe is during the sedentary period, here's a really nice piece right here. Once again, red on buff. This one has a bit of caliche on it, hard to see. But anyway, so you'll see this pitting on the surface of the red on buff. And what we believe is they actually mixed a vegetable fiber in with the clay. And as they fired the pots, that vegetable fire would pop out or burn away and cause pitting in the clay. So once again, here's another trash mound. And you can see there's broken stone, broken monos, pieces of matate. So lots of broken fragments, lots of ceramics. And it looks like here we have more red on buff. Same with this piece. This piece actually exhibits a little bit of polish on the surface. You can see that polish. 
red on buff. You can see the fringe motif. So this could have been to a jar, a bowl, a helmet pot. And usually what you get is you get these fringes that represent rain and you get cloud lines. And then underneath the fringed motif, you'll have either human figures or animals, hatched animals in the ceramic design. Okay, so I want to show you one additional shrub that I am definitely going to take advantage of. Probably every single fruit off of this shrub. Uh, coming off of this 24-hour fast, like I said, I'm, I'm quite hungry. So this shrub is called wild goji berry or wolfberry. You can see these fruits. They're very small. As you get into central Arizona, the fruits get quite large. But you can pick them and eat them raw. So just like the goji berry in the grocery store, they have a similar taste. Very sweet, not bitter. And they have kind of a tomato background to them. Now with the wild goji berry, they're actually much more nutritious to gather them wild out here than to buy them in a grocery store. A lot of the times in the grocery stores, they're adding salt and even sugar to the goji berry. And that's not necessarily. So one thing about the, so with the goji berry, when you harvest them out in the wild like this, they're much more nutritious for you. They're not full of chemicals and they don't have any additives to them. In the grocery store, they're adding sugars and salts. A lot of the time they, they salt the goji berry and you can taste it to an extent. They're still similar in flavor, but there's no need to add sugar and salt on these berries. They're very, very sweet as they are just right off the bush. Just an amazing treat and uh, very, very thankful for what this desert provides even in some of the off seasons. All right, take a look at what I found here. More strawberry pincushion. I'm going to work these out and of course consume them. All right, so take a look. Got a good harvest off of that and I left a few more for the animals. <laughs> mm. Oh man. Those are amazing. Holy cow. They go so fast though. <laughs> it's like you almost want to just sit there and chew them and savor them, but just an amazing, amazing fruit.